celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble. We go until mis- mid mystery, mis- midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, but first, uh, before we go to our citizens panel in about twenty five minutes from right now, let's check in with an old friend. All right, everybody, let me uh, see here. I'm going to go turn myself on on my Skype. I got to do that, and then I got to call our good friend here because it always starts off with some kind of interesting, interesting thing to say. Here we go. Mr. Stagmetti, Shell Levine here. I'm sorry we couldn't connect on that Rio Rancho property. It's gone up in value. Let me see. $80,000. Oh, great. Get me up $40,000 in small bills. The uh, Brook Farms uh, contract saying they bust to get disconnected. Hello? Hello. <laughs> it's Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, the one man play uh, here at Kingsburg Amusement Park. Four shows a day. Do you know I'm uh, right after Donnie Mo sings the big songs of the Korean War? Do you know I've never watched that movie? I've you never saw it. You never saw that movie. It's, oh my God! It's the Godfather of uh, of uh, dialogue. It's incredible. It's, you got to see Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. You have to see Glenn. It's the law. Go see it now. It, Forget the interview. Go watch that movie now. Oh, okay. Goodbye. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dial tone from the 50s. Ooh, thank you. You know what the problem is? I, I for some reason, uh, I start watching it, and then I have something else to do. So I, I, oh, I, 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 uh, I, I, I don't know. The what alphabet it, soup boils, and it, it's all over. It doesn't seem to. It doesn't seem to grab me. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, the, I just, I, I just, oh man, I, I can't watch it enough. It's I have incredible. to watch. It's I mean, dialogue. everybody. It's, it's all dialogue. No car chases. No pie fights. No gunfights. It's just dialogue, and it's fucking riveting. You know, all the actors in it are just top notch. So, every, yeah, there you go. Everybody that I respect loves that film. Okay, so I mean, yeah. I, I know it's got to be a and good me film. Too. <laughs> I think what I'll do is I'm going to force myself to watch it. Just, just to do you smoke a reefer? Smoke a reefer. Smoke a have a reefer and sit down. You concentrate. You relax. You watch the movie. You go, whoa! That was fine cinema. It was written though by Mammoth, wasn't it? David. Yeah, Mammoth? it's yeah. chock full of curses and riveting dialogue. Yeah, but he, he's such a right wing fuck. Is he? I didn't know that. I don't know. I just I don't care about his politics. But it, yeah, I didn't know he's right wing. How about that? Yeah, he turned but, into a, uh, well. He yeah. turned into a right wing shit. Ah, oh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Trump. Well, they say when you make your first million, you immediately turn from a Democrat to a Republican. Um, so they you, you you turn from incompetent to evil. <laughs> That's what they say. Well, I, I keep talking about my uh, my urologist who the other day revealed that he voted for Trump, and yet I like <clears throat> yet yet I like this urologist. And of course, on top of that, he's got his balls and my balls in his hand. There you so, go. You, you better know. you better agree with him as long as you're there. So. Yeah, <laughs> as so, long as he's got a grip on you, you better agree. Yeah. So I I don't know. I, <laughs> you know, I I get these problems. I get problems with like a guy like Mammoth. I go, okay, fuck him. You know, uh-huh. fuck him. But I, here's I did he, not know about him, but I just I just. I, he's a great writer, especially any that 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 play. Anyway, that movie I, is. You should watch it. You should watch it. Fuck my man. Watch it once, and you never have to watch it again. You may want it. You may not want it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Oh no, I've seen plays he's done, and 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 movies he's done, and I've loved the work. You know. Yeah. And but but the work is going to get sullied by my opinion of it. You know what I'm saying? There you go. So yeah, that, yeah, I understand. Problem. Like Hemingway was a great writer, but he was a drunk ass fucking well, bloodthirsty cunt. Well, he, he, I, I mentioned this also in the last couple of days, but I may as well mention it to you too. Uh, David Lynch, who we admire as a weirdo, right? Uh, yeah, did right. things like Twin Peaks and uh, a 
whole bunch of films that were weird. Uh, Blue Velvet and so on, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, he has come out and said that Trump is one of the greatest presidents in history because he's disrupted the thing so much. Okay, right. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> now, now uh, There's people who, hey, people like him. Wait a minute. But this is David Lynch. And I don't know uh, if he's complimenting him or if he's putting him down. Trump tweeted and said it was a compliment. But I don't know uh, that it is a compliment. And because, to, to begin with, Lynch was a former Obama supporter. Okay? Uh, uh, so, uh, I, when he says, one of the greatest presidents in history, because he's disrupted the thing so much, maybe the word greatest is a not a good term to use, but I've heard people use that term and not refer to uh, uh, greatness in the same way we look at greatness. For instance, Louis Farrakhan, who I oh, interviewed, yeah. who oh. I interviewed in the yeah. interview I you did, did with him, uh, commented on the fact that people put him down for saying that Hitler was a great man. Now, he said, I didn't mean he was a wonderful person. I said he was a great man. In history, <laughs> he has a greatness <laughs> in history. <laughs> Oh, God. Now, he, well, he could have worded it better, but he is a Jew hater. He, I've seen no, speeches of him. Just, no, he, he, I, he hates us. He don't like us. No, I interviewed him. He didn't hate me, and he knew I was Jewish. You know, in maybe, fact, maybe he, on a one-on-one -on -one no, thing he likes fact, us. But he groups, said to me, he, he he said like to me everybody says I'm anti-Semitic and that I don't like Jews. He said, I was a violinist. I was. He was a violin prodigy. I don't know if you know that. Uh -huh. uh, he used to play with Horace Height in his musical Nights. Um, I know he was a Calypso singer. But he was I also he was a Calypso a singer. And he said, when I was a, uh, as a kid, as a violinist, uh, Yasha Heifetz was my hero. You know, he said, Yasha Heifetz was a Jew. I didn't hate him. Uh -huh. You know, he said, it, it, it's a misnomer that I hate Jews. Yeah. He, he, I just watched the speech he made where he blames all the world's problems on the Jews. <laughs> so, yeah, but, I don't know, but, maybe, he's, maybe he's with his followers. But, he says he sings a different tune. But, I don't know. Well, think about it. Maybe he's right. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, you ever spend a week on Long Island? You might agree with him. I don't know. You know, do you want to spend <laughs> the whole, do you want? Do you want to move to Miami? Really? Oh, yeah. God, or Brooklyn. Or, <laughs> spend yeah. a week in Nassau County. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> You'll yeah. probably join them. Yeah, you don't want to hang out with Jews all the time. You know, nah, not all the time. They get they so yeah. it's like you know, man, it's like nails on a blackboard. And, you know, and, and, you know and, and people are saying, "Oh, Alex, me. Alex Bennett, you Anglo person, you, you're horrible, <laughs> you're terrible." And uh, the fact is, I happen to be Jewish, so I can say these things. I'm very Jewish. Uh, I'm terminally yeah. Jewish. Uh, they're terminally Jewish. Uh, if uh, we are. <laughs> if, if, if Hitler had uh, killed me, he would have been happy and just spared everybody else. That's how Jewish Man, I am. Well, I got him right there. I guess we can quit now. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> fun is enough. That's the one I wanted. Okay, the other 5,900,999 can go home. Yeah, right. So, you know. Uh, but uh, I, you know what I was thinking of doing? I was thinking of reviewing black media. Uh-huh. <laughs> and saying... Uh, a white person reviews black media and writing like oh, okay. a blog on it. Because, <laughs> because I've decided that I've been watching so much stuff with black people as, as the uh -huh. subject matter that I be, have become an authority. Oh, okay. uh, and now people you will say, teach, but you, you could teach an Afro-American studies class at Hofstra University. No, but they say, but you're white. And I go, does that disqualify me from complimenting or putting down or dissing some black media? There you go. Alex X. And I, <laughs> and I decided that I'm, maybe I do that. Like, for instance, I just watched Luke Cage on Netflix. I binge watched it. Uh -huh. And I think Luke Cage is terrific because... It really talks about growing up, you know, being living in Harlem and racism. And uh, in this case, uh, there's a Jamaican who's his enemy in this particular case. But th there's always this speech by this other guy going, you shouldn't do this because we Jamaicans have enough problems <laughs> with, with the prejudice against us and blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. 
And I just think the whole show was very good from that standpoint. It was a good example uh, for black kids, you know. He's the hero of Harlem because he's bulletproof. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, you know, it really had a lot of nice messaging in it and so on. So I like that. Yeah. I think that would be uh -huh. the best of all the black stuff. Now, on the other there hand, Black Panther, if I were black, I would hate. Yeah. And here's why, here's why I'd hate it. Everybody's going, oh, we love Black Panther. Last we have a black superhero. No, Luke Cage was around before Black Panther. Okay. Uh -huh. Luke Cage <laughs> made it to television first. Okay. Uh and and what I saw in Black Panther was I don't know if you saw the movie, is no, I didn't. it's really a put down of Africa, because uh -oh. it, it's like this uh, it's like this little country that's kind of invisible to the rest of the world that got hit by a meteor and suddenly had this technology and they're a very technologically advanced civilization, but what it's uh -huh. saying is is that all these people that lived in the jungle had no culture. <laughs> you know, all these people that wore the loincloths were, were heathens. Uh, you know, uh, you, uh, other the fact that these guys are wearing measure. these guys are wearing beautiful costumes and have technology. Oh, uh -huh. gee, all my phones are ringing at once. How do I stop that? Oh, my God. That's, that's the black community. They're hearing what oh, you're doing, and oh, they're mad. It's my wife. I'll hang you better up. Hide it. You better hide out, mister. I'll hang up on her. She just called me, my wife. Well, now she's probably mad at me because I and she'll probably call back again. Uh, anyway, want to talk to your friends instead of me? You son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. And my phone's in the other room, but I have this thing where all, all my things go off at the same time. My iPad, my iPhone, my oh, uh, God, Apple yeah, Watch. That's a lot of fun when that happens. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, where was I? Uh, oh yeah. So uh, Wakanda, I think, is the name of the country <clears throat> in uh, Black Panther, and I just felt that it. It um, it didn't just bespeak black culture well. It kind of negated uh -huh. the fact that normal black culture was nothing. These guys had it all because they had technology. Uh -huh. All right. And so, uh -huh. so what is being held up as the great black picture, I think, is a bunch, bunch of shit. Now, there's this other show okay. that we watch called Power that is uh, produced by 50 Cent. And if there was ever a show, fit. if there was ever a show, you know, we talk about how movies were terrible because they stereotype black people. Well, you know, what are these badass cocaine dealers in television shows and movies but setting up a, uh, a, 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 a you know, a, what do you call it? A, uh, um, you know, a, a stereotype. All right? Yeah. Sure. A, and that show, like his stereotype city. You know, they're all gangsters. They're all killing each other. They're all dealing cocaine, and everybody goes, "Oh, this is wonderful. This is terrific. This is this is a great show. I love this show. Love that show. Yeah." But it's for black people. It's just a reaffirmation of a stereotype. So, yeah, you know, uh, that's so why we need more movies like Shaft, or a brother takes on the mafia and wins. Exactly. <laughs> he's more like that. Shaft, more shows like what's happening, positive shows. Shaft was pretty good, you know. Shaft was good. I yeah. liked it, especially pretty low budget movie, especially for the time. And, and then you, uh, had, you, know, you had New Jack Classic, New Jack City, which was filmed in my building. Oh really? And, and, oh, that's pretty cool. And, and the movie when Denzel, not Denzel Washington, was uh, who's the other guy? Anyway, uh, the lead actor. Oh, uh, Mario Van Peebles. No, or, uh, I no, think no. He, no actors. he directed. One actor from another. He directed. I still confused Dustin Hoffman and Al Pacino. I yeah, don't want and, to be anyway, he um, um, he points to um, the map of the building, and he says, "This is where we're going to build the crack lab, and it's our kitchen." <laughs> how about that? So yeah. how is the crack business? Yeah, just so bubbling along. Th that film, that film, kind of stereotyped blacks, but there were good blacks in it too. You know they cops that were yeah. fighting these drug dealers and so on. But, yep. you know, I think that, uh, that the idea that, that like Black Panther was a wonderful thing for black people. No, it wasn't. Uh -huh. You know, it, it didn't say anything about black people. It said, it said about black people, this is, what, this is what it is about black people when they become too white. You know, well, <laughs> they become Charlie Pride. No, I just, I just, I, I was always bothered when I was a kid by the fact that, and as an adult, 
by the fact that they consider people who ran around a loincloth in a jungle as, as uh, primitive. And I don't think that's primitive at all. I think that's maybe wise, you know. I mean, it's it's better uh, than being stuck in bumper to bumper traffic on Highway oh, One. Oh yeah, you, you know they, they they say these people are primitive, but they don't need all that shit. They don't need emails and you this know, and that. They, they know, don't they, have to go cool to some where they are. A lot of them live long. Time. They don't have to go to some thankless job every day where they toil exactly. not for eight hours, but maybe twelve hours a day to help some guy, uh-huh. be, some few guys become very rich. Meanwhile, they exactly. live in the jungle. They do the little thing. They raise their crops. They do whatever they do. Maybe they war with another tribe, but they had culture. They had music. They had sure. They had the literature. Everything, you know. Sure, and the community was pretty much self-contained, and everyone relied on themselves and each other, and everything was cool. I mean, what always so, bo- yeah. what always bothered me was when they used to say, "Well, you know, Yiddish isn't really a language; <clears throat> it's a <laughs> bastardization of Hebrew and German, or whatever." It's a throat clearing. (laughs) And I said, no, you're wrong. Because you know how you determine whether a a language is a language or not? If there are books, music, and and art, and theater written in that Uh, language, and if there are, uh, then it is an official language. And Yiddish Uh is an official language. But it's completely lost because very few people speak it anymore. You know. Yep, kind of like Latin. Yeah, <laughs> it made you take that in school like a thousand years after the Latin. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I have a friend, Jack Garfine, who's turning eighty-eight years old, and he speaks Yiddish. But uh, he was also in a concentration. Well, he remembers when it was all the rage. He was also in a concentration camp. In fact, he was in eleven of them. Yeah. Oh, Jesus! Oh, he was so popular they kept shipping him one to the other. Yeah, he, 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 he did. A, he, he did a tour. <laughs> you know, I mean, he did a tour. To, oh God. Auschwitz today, Dachau tomorrow. We open in Auschwitz, Auschwitz, and then we go to, you know. Uh, but, I, I, um, um, but he he speaks, uh, I think, pretty perfect Yiddish. My ex-wife, oh. my ex-wife Susan, speaks perfect Yiddish. Uh-huh, that's pretty cool. But there are very few people in the world that speak perfect Yiddish. No, I don't know anyone. That most of them have died off, so I don't know anyone who speaks Yiddish, especially here in Northern California. So what's uh, new, I what, haven't been meeting the right people. So what's new in the wonderful world of music? Anything? Yeah, everyone cool is dead. What's new with you? Okay. <laughs> Nothing's going on. I don't know what's going on today, but uh, you know, I, I'm still living in the past and enjoying it. Yeah, so there yeah, you go. Yeah, anybody, I, just, anybody I just watched di- the Ricky Nelson concert. Anybody die recently? That, uh... Uh, Joe Jackson died today. So, I, I know Joe Jackson died. Well, the, this will be broadcast tomorrow, but uh, he died, yeah. Uh, yeah. He died, and Dan Ingram died, one of my one of his early favorite you know, that, that was dead. Amazing. Dan, and uh, he passed away. Yeah, Dan Ingram, uh, in case people don't know, was in a, a very big uh, radio personality in New York City. Uh, the fact is that in those days, when you worked New York City, they didn't know who you were in Chicago, you know? Exactly. Uh, but he was very big here, and a, and a, and a very good talent. And if you uh, don't recognize the name... The voice might be recognizable in that he did all the Hawaiian fruit punch ads for years. That's right. They yeah. did a lot of voiceovers for commercials, and not to mention the radio. Okay. Yeah, my God, if you're in now, New York, you definitely knew who he was. I read yesterday that Dan Ingram had died, and I thought yeah. to myself, I thought he was dead. <laughs> I thought he died in the 80s. What gives? I mean, isn't that amazing? Occasionally <laughs> you hear somebody who died, and you went, they weren't dead already? You know. Oh yeah, when they're like with Billy Wilder, I thought he died in 1948. What's going on? Here? Well, because this is a guy who was extremely popular in radio, who uh, got who got out of it, <clears throat> and you know, rather than like me, keep going and going and going until nobody really uh-huh. gives a shit about you anymore. Uh, he 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 stopped, and I guess he I uh-huh. don't know what he went on to. He had some private businesses and things like that. But he gave up on, on, on the radio industry years ago. I mean, before any uh-huh. of you, most any of you were born who were listening to me. I didn't right? even know that. I didn't, I didn't know he stopped. I thought he was going to the end. But uh, No, no. I mean, if he go. was going to the end, he'd be on serious right now, you know. Uh, well, well, we saved his money. He didn't have to work. God damn. He, he was all over the place he a must, long time for yeah, many, he, many, many years. He must have done okay. But I, when I came to New York, Ingram had already, I believe, stopped doing radio in New York. 
Wow. Yeah, and everybody would talk about Dan Ingram. Oh, he was the he was the, you know, he was the pinnacle of the business and how you should be, sure. and how you should act, and so on. And uh, uh-huh. uh, you know, I I don't know about his greatness because I grew up in San Francisco, so I didn't know who the fuck he was. You know, no, I, of course, if you knew in New York, you knew who he is. Like, you know who the Yankees are in New York. You know who Don, Dan Ingram and Cousin Brucey were. You had to know or you were a traitor. Well, Brucey's still do, working. I think he's still over at Sirius yeah. doing his little little show or whatever. You know. Yeah. Uh, with that. 77, the BBC right now. Why do you kids like using the term acid rock? I prefer the term progressive rock. I'm a Cousin Brucey. 77, the BBC, here's the box tops. I love Cousin He has perhaps <laughs> one of the worst hair pieces ever. Oh, it's horrendous. It's like, I think he, I think Carl Perkins willed, willed his hairpiece to Cousin Brucey. Here's what Brucey did. Maybe and, Tony and by, the, by the way, let me preface this by saying I know Brucey, nice guy, nice enough guy. Uh, a little bit into himself. He'll always start talking about himself, you know, but, <laughs> but, but a nice enough guy, you know. He never, yeah, he never, did, he nice never did wrong by me. Uh, yeah. But he had this studio. They gave him a studio to use at Sirius. Now, everybody uses the same studios. You know, you, you're finished with your show. Somebody else goes in and uses it, right? There you go. But he thought it was his own, so he put up photographs <laughs> of himself all on the outside <laughs> windows of the studios because they were pure <laughs> glass. His wife did it or something. And what was terrible, and you don't do this, if you're wearing your bad hairpiece, you don't put up ah. pictures of you losing your hair. No, oh God. <laughs> because there are pictures of him, ah. you know, in uh, you know, with the Beatles, and he's got hair, and then uh, with uh, Stevie yeah. Wonder, and then it's a receding hairline, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, you p- go ahead twenty years, and he's got this full head of hair. Now, who are you fooling? There you go. Who are you fooling? Yeah. And, oh, Brucey, what would you ever learn? And don't put it on display, you know. <laughs> going into Smithsonian when he dies right between the spirit of St. Louis and Dillinger Schmeckel. Well, I, as I used to say, you could take a you could take an aborigine from the middle of Australia who's never seen a, practically another human being besides his own tribe and show him a picture of Cousin Brucey and they'll go, wig. <laughs> wig. <laughs> <laughs> wig. Yeah. Like the picture of Tony Bennett in the 50s. He has a receding hairline in the 1989. He's got a full head of hair. I bought With a the price tag on it. Remember when I bought a hairpiece? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Beetle Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I wore it for, what, about two times or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I never. I don't understand. It's like a hair hat, so I don't get it. I, I, well, I, if I, I lost my hair, I just, uh, I'd either shave my head or just have the horseshoe. Online, I on my uh, uh, Roku channel, TV channel, I actually have the special that I did for Channel 44, which is the worst TV special of all time. Uh. I guarantee yeah. it. Uh, and at the end, I do a piece with a woman, <laughs> and I've got my hairpiece on. Uh, and it just, oh, uh, my, my wife loves to see that video. She just laughs <laughs> her head off. <laughs> what were you thinking? And now I got You're it. I got fine it. Without, without the hair. You I know, got Sean it. Connery and everybody. You don't need it. I got it because I had fuck you money. It cost about $1,000 for two of them. There you go. And uh, ah, uh, I uh, one for the day and one for the night. I, I put it on, I put it on, and uh, I didn't like it. I did, just didn't like the way I looked. I I felt dishonest. You know. Yeah, you didn't need it. You didn't need it. I I would hate to be fucking some woman and have it fall off. You know that kind exactly. of exactly. But um, uh, do you know Phil Spector had like ten different hair pieces of varying lengths. Well, so throughout the oh month, yeah yeah. Lots of them. It's all different hairstyle. The no, big no, afro no, and the, no, the, the no, blonde. No, but Swedish when, looked at when he was just trying to hide his man. when he was just trying to hide his balding, it was there were like uh-huh. ten different hair pieces and they were all different lengths. So throughout the month, <laughs> he would wear the next one so it would look like his hair was growing. You go, whoops! I got to go get a haircut and then he put on the old one, the first one. <laughs> you know, but no, he had he changed hair pieces throughout the month so it would look like he was, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, Things to do today: get a new hairpiece, beat up Ronnie. Okay, Phil Spector's list. Be- best uh, uh, advice I ever got uh, was from a comedian. I'm trying to remember his name now. The one who died in the car crash, his daughter was driving. Uh, uh, oh, Schimmel, uh, Schimmel, uh, Schimmel. Schimmel. 
Bob Schimmel. Schimmel said to me, because I used to wear my hair long in the back, even though I was starting to bald, and he said, do what I do. I said, what? He said, cut it short. He said, that's called preemptive baldness. What you're doing yeah. is, no, is it looks better when you wear your hair short, you know, even if you're balding, because it just, it's more attractive. But when you've got the Danny DeVito uh -huh. look where it's, you know, nothing on top and everything on the sides, uh, you know, nobody yeah. wants to see that. And, of course, the worst thing yeah. of all time is do not get a comb over. Oh, no, no, God. I never, When I was a little kid, I'd see those. i go, what is he thinking? The guy must have let his hair grow really long on one side. That's insane. King of the comb-overs. What, what does he look like? Our president is king of the comb-overs. Oh, that's, that's beyond the comb-over. That's like butterscotch cotton candy on his head. I don't, yeah. I don't even, that's like... It defies physics and gravity. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know what it is either. But let me tell you this, that he supposedly had a scalp reduction where they bring the scalp together. I think yeah. he had a brain reduction, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two and, for one. And so he's got to cover that because it, oh, it's it, he, it's horrible. It's just horrible. It so, is. I've seen pictures of him with his hair blowing, and he's, he's, he's just thin and white. Yeah, and, yeah, I, just, yeah. I don't know. He's, he's, he's weird. I, he I, just, I, Trump just said that he doesn't believe Wyoming exists. I know so, why yeah. he's jealous now. Now I know why he's jealous of, uh, of Obama, because Obama had all his hair. Hey, listen, yeah. I got hey. I got to go here, friend. Already? Uh, all right. Well, uh, we'll do it again. This, is, this has been great. Ladies and gentlemen, the if It's always fun. Always fun, Stephen Pearl. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you very much, and thank you, Alex, for having me. It's always a joy. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. And here I am, folks, in my, uh, in my glory and in my... Uh, what are these? These pajamas. These are old. We, we, this is uh, what I call um, uh, ramble wear. Uh, yes. Anyway, uh, the, thank you very much to Stephen Pearl for, for uh, doing a nice little conversation with us, as he always does. And uh, let's see here. Now I open up the Skype lines here so that people can call the program. In case you don't know how to call the program, just go over to gabnet.net and over on the right-hand side of the page, on the right-hand side of the page is a, um, is a whole tutorial on how you can call us. It's very simple. I mean, you just download a program called Skype. You install it. It takes seconds, really, to install. Uh, you answer four questions, first name, last name, uh, email address, and the name you want as an ID. Like ours here, if you want to call us, is GabNet Live. And then we even make it easier for you by uh, having a little button you can push there, and it just calls us. And that's it. It's simple. And I'm getting a few things adjusted here, uh, which I probably should have done before I went on the air, but I, but I didn't. Uh, and uh, so here I go doing it now. There we go. And we're waiting for our people to start calling. And you will see what a citizen panel is. It's not just one person talking to one person like most talk shows. It's one person talking to, oh, God, we've had as many as 12 other people on at the same time. It was a long time ago. That's when people really, like, were into this program uh, so much that the, the lines would fill up in the first, you know, five minutes of the show. We had that happen the other night, and it was it felt like the old days. You know, I'd piss, oh, we're going to the phones, and all of a sudden, blah, 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 everybody, uh, everybody joins in. Here now, I just sit here waiting and doing that with my, with my what do you call it? Oh, by the way, you know, I got the new phone, and I got the iPad, and the guy told me it would cost me only so much okay a month and then uh, I got this thing from uh, AT&T that said uh, uh, well no here's what your monthly charge is gonna be and it was like $198 and I I didn't even hear that but my guy told me hey it's gonna cost you eh, it's gonna cost you uh, 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 pennies on the dollar It's gonna be cheaper than you were paying with your old system so anyway I called up, so I, I was really mad about this, and I called up uh, AT&T today, and, oh, hello there, Phil, how are you? I called AT&T today, 
And I said, uh, listen, I, you know, I got this thing from you, and it says I'm going to have to pay $198. It'll be $188 because you take $10 off for auto pay and whatever. And I said, I was told it was going to be around, I have a thing here that says it's going to be $141 plus tax. And uh, she looked at everything, and she said, oh, no, that, whatever they sent you, that, they, were, they were just estimating something based on other factors, like the fact that you already had another iPad account that you finally canceled. She said, your bill before taxes will be $131 a month, which it, that's for both the iPad and the phone. Before, I was paying like $135 with tax for both the phone and the iPad. Uh, for the fo phone alone, 135 and 30 for the iPad. So I'm getting along cheaper. So I, they, I got that all solved today with AT&T. Hello, Phil. Hey, put the coffee down. Coffee's for closers. And if you go to see Glen Gary, Glen <laughs> Ross, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've never seen Glenn, Garrett, and Glenn Ross, and uh, people I know who I respect love that film. Yeah. So I, I know that I should watch it, and every time I start to watch it, I, something pulls me away or something, and I, I, I've got, you know, I just am not, not uh, good at it. So, you know. It's, it's, a, t it's a tough movie the first time. Uh, you know, you really have to concentrate. And then uh, once you see it a couple of times, you get it's like Pulp Fiction. You get more and more and more uh, each time you see it. Right. And um, and and once you do, it, it's 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 a phenomenal movie. Really? Well, that's what yeah. everybody tells me. You know, um, as I was saying it to uh, Pearl, the only drawback for me is Mammoth. You know. Hey, I. Must be a nice guy. <laughs> uh, must be a nice guy. You, you probably like um, um, David Lynch. Uh, David Lynch is. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't watch Twin Peaks or any of those. Well, it, it, listen what he said about Trump. I mentioned this last night, but you weren't here. Mm -hmm. uh, he stated. Uh, let me see here. Uh, th uh, that uh, he, uh, Trump is potentially going to be one of the greatest presidents in history because he's disrupted uh, the, th the thing so much. Now, the question is whether he was saying that tongue-in-cheek because I'm, try I'm trying to look at what he said here. He said, one of the greatest presidents in history because he has disrupted the thing so much. Mm. Now, uh, what do you think Lynch means by that? Uh, Trump wrote a, wrote a, of course, wrote a tweet saying, I love David Lynch. I love his movies. Oh, thank you so much, David. But I think, I think Lynch was damning him with faint praise. I don't know. I think Trump might have written the statement that uh, Lynch used. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I have a uh, congresswoman out here named Barbara Lee. Yeah. And I understand there was death threats against her today, so I guess uh, turnaround's fair, huh? What? Who? Who? who How's it turnaround to get a death threat? Well, uh, well, it's it, a little it, difference I'm, between being refused service at a restaurant and a death threat, Phil. Well, it's not just that she was refused service; she was uh, uh, Lee had said that people should make sure that they can't go outside. That this is just the beginning. They should harass them, and uh, uh, I'm I not. I'm not. I'm not saying that they should har <laughs> should, should harass them. The word is harass, by the way. Uh, they, 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 they should. Uh, but I do believe that none of them should go anywhere and think they've got a free pass. They should well, know that the, there are people out there that are unhappy with what they're doing. Because let's face it, you don't get to talk to an official in the government very often. So when one is sitting in front of you, you've got a chance to show your ire and your dis disdain. I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah, uh, so first off, this is not a kingdom. Yeah. Uh, I guaranteed my right to speak, and if you don't want to hear what it is, I don't give a shit. And if she wants to leave, then she should leave. But again, we're going to have this conversation. 
she's not the one speaking up. The stupid white men in her party feel that she needs to have somebody speak up for her. Well, well, I don't, well, I don't, I, I don't get, what, I don't get what you're saying there. I think yeah. you're going out of your way to disguise. Uh, no, no the, the statement happened. Yeah, actually, I'm Republican man. So the issue well, is, she doesn't seem to have a problem with this. She's not the one bringing it up all the time. But the white men in no, her but, party but 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 what she's talking about, Barbara Lee, is like what happened with uh, with uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who was refers, for, refused service at a restaurant, which I think actually was a nice thing they did for her health, uh, because she could stand to use a few pounds for her health. I did tell you I believe the Red Hen is an organic food restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, and is, is uh, with really? healthy, healthy uh, farm. Table. Well, in that ca in, in that case, uh, I would throw the owner of the Red Hen out of my meat restaurant. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so, just out of curiosity, Hello, Phil, Patrick. You, oh, hi, Patrick. Have you verified your statement from last night where they chased her down the street? Shit. But, verified. Yeah, I, uh, it was it was in the news. I think it was CBS. I, I, I don't think uh, I didn't hear they chased her down the street. Uh, I understood that the employees of the restaurant followed her to another restaurant. Across the street. No. I didn't see it anywhere credible. Uh, well, you watch fake news. No, you watch it fake shows news. Shows you the list of places. You know that something? I, I think news. maybe we're all watching fake news, but we don't know it. Well, <laughs> yeah. our, our real president is coming. Our real president, Putin, is coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he's coming to Finland. He's going to Finland, yeah. What's in Finland? Why Finland? I, I think the Russians own it anyway. Why can't we just go over to his place or he comes over to our place? What, what is well, wrong with that? Why do we have to find these, these out-of-the-way places and tie up their fucking traffic? Uh, yeah, a couple of moose and a cow. What, you ever been to the, the Norwegian countries? Oh, very nice. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can take off your shirt. Yeah, you can take off shirt and ride, ride on the horse. Yeah, well, uh, that's uh, they have <laughs> sonnets there. And then you can hunt for a moose and squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> take off your pants and jump that's, in the fjord. Uh, yeah, then, then they have something to do with Boris and Natasha. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 no, uh, anyway. Moose and squirrel? Yeah, moose and squirrel had to do it. Yeah, moose but they it. had something to do with Boris but, and Natasha. But, but, I think they but, were spies. Let's get back to this little argument we were having, because I love dusting it up with you. I think that uh, if I saw Sarah Huckabee Sanders somewhere, I would actually walk across the street to tell her off. Okay? Well, I, I, so, I, I don't respect that. Well, you don't have to respect it. And, yeah. and no one cares if you respect it or not. Yeah. Well, that's just, uh, you know, hey, I'm glad, you know, since because, you have because that Because oddly enough, the things you do respect have so little uh, uh, decency to them, you know, yeah. that I don't trust your sense of what's right and what's wrong. I mean, well, you, 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 you've got a guy here by the name of Donald Trump who is the biggest douchebag we could possibly have as a president. He's going to put another uh, uh, person on the Supreme Court. Oh, yeah, I'm Court. sure he will. Watch your ovaries. I'm, I, I'm sure he will. <laughs> you know something? They're, not, they, they're gone. No, they're not going to. They're really not going to do away with Roe v. Wade because it's 40 years old. It's they're, the they're law of the land. It's, it's in Wisconsin it's, law. New it, it's not the law of the land. 17 states in the United States do not honor Roe v. Wade. Get that through your head. Those women are not free women. Well, well, I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying, though, is, is that because, it's, it, because it's been law for 40 years, uh, you can bet it's your life. Down. It's only 36 states. Are no, 37 no, states no, are, no, it's, no. It's you're ta you're, you, wait a minute. You're talking about uh, constitutional amendments there. You're not talking about the Supreme only Court ruling. states accepted it. Yes, Patrick. It's been tied up. Let, let, Those let some, let some Trump good... Trump got in there. They've got yeah, 17 okay. states that are about to fall through the cracks. Let's let some good sense thinking come from Patrick. Go ahead, Patrick. Oh, before you start off, let me tell you, you're full of shit. Go ahead. If there's any topic you don't touch with Renee, it has to do with abortion. She's That's why I picked it. 
<laughs> she's always going to be right. She's always going to be right. You're always going to be wrong, no matter what. So just leave it alone. Yeah, well, no, see, see, you're president. talking about right and wrong. I'm actually talking about science and bullshit. No, she insulted my president, so I went for the ovaries. You know. <laughs> yeah. So no, actually, what he was talking about is the fact that, and and Phil, this is not a you thing, and Patrick, this is definitely not a you thing. But he went. To, he talked about the fact that the values of the Republican Party are shit. They are nothing now. Three wives, five children, hookers, porn stars, directors, collusion, and all of those things are okay with you. Wait a minute. Yeah. I'm having okay. second thoughts about him. Uh, how many wives <laughs> have you had uh, there, Bennett? I've had four. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you beat Trump in the and 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 I have and also I might add I have fucked a porn star too so you know right. I, I I do fall into the category but we, but we weren't the party saying that these were the bad things and that your party was and when Trump it never comes said it was to bad. the right day your party's got no plan A nor plan hey, B Trump never said it was bad you know he was happy doing what he did. You know, he wasn't even a Republican. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Nope. Actually, he was pro-choice. So that's yep. the point I was going to say. When he was doing all that, mm -hmm. he wasn't—he wasn't a politician at all. So it doesn't matter what the Republican Party thought at that point. The only thing that matters is that the Republican Party allowed him in. I think he was at that time making some political overtures. However, yeah. he had he had his eyes on. He, he tried to run for what was it, governor of New York under the Libertarian Party or something like that. Huh? Hey, uh, Trump was pro-choice before he knocked up Marla Maples. Mm -hmm. Then you know, then when she had the kid. <laughs> Yeah, now he didn't change from pro pro life. He didn't go from pro choice to pro life until he started running for president. But he was pro choice. No, yeah. he Just did a pretty good job at changing. Well, for uh, uh, quite frankly, been. between you and me, I don't think that Donald Trump has any kind of a. Uh, political bearing one way or the other. I think he is just into the politics of whatever suits me and gets me ahead is going to be the way I'm going to go. Uh, he, uh, he, he, he created his whole ethos when he ran for president to appeal to a certain portion of the, of the electorate. But his true feelings, he could care less. He is so consistent. How can you say that he doesn't believe in what he's doing? He's, he's not consistent. Yeah, he hasn't changed one iota from what he promised. From what he promised, that that was by the so time he had codified, he had codified the Trump presidential character. You know, prior to that, he was all over the place. Prior to that, he was a, he was he was a lefty, and then he was a libertarian, and then he was the this, and he was the that. And you know, he never had any true politics. He was looking for the thing that would get him elected. I don't yeah. know. No, uh, he was courted by a lot of people that wanted to uh, be politicians or were politicians looking well, because, for money. You know, looking for money, obviously. But, yeah. you know, they didn't realize he didn't have any. Who heard that, who heard that Mitt Romney won his thing? This is going to be fun. I have to well, you know, I, look, look, you can say whatever you want to about Mitt. You know, I would, never was a, a supporter of Mitt Romney. Yeah. But at least he's a decent person. I mean, you know, he's a Mormon, and they they live by a certain set of rules which have a certain high level of morality to them. I don't so, believe it. Huh? You, oh, you don't believe it? No. Oh, okay. I no. think they're just as hypocritical as the rest of them. Oh, okay, because I, I used to go out with a Mormon, and I have to say that, you know, their beliefs are pretty solid. You know, I they you I don't agree with them. You know, and I I think that they have ex over the years they excluded people from the Mormon ranks like blacks. Uh, and uh, when I was a trying to join a Boy Scout uh, troop that was a Mormon Boy Scout troop, uh, they didn't want the Jew. But you know, um, uh, all, all I'm saying is that when the when the people down in Vegas wanted to get people to run their casinos. 
uh, they hired as pit bosses and as people to run the casinos uh, Mormons because they knew that Mormons wouldn't steal from them. In that fact, in fact, in fact, the first place the Mormons actually moved to was the valley where Las Vegas is, and then they moved up to uh, up to uh, Salt Lake City. So, but uh, no, the mob, the mob uh, always thought they were scrupulously honest, and they were, you know. Um, so, you know, I mean, they also like the Jews for accountants. You know, they did do some massacring when in the early days. You know, there was that whole bunch of people they didn't like coming into 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 uh, Utah, so they. They killed them all. Uh, but mm. they don't talk about that massacre much. That's kind of swept under the rug. You don't bring that up to the Mormons. <laughs> is, is that TV show still on? I mean, I didn't watch it in the first what? place. Oh, that's, that's a long, so long ago. No TV show lasts that long unless it's The Simpsons. Uh, all right. I was curious. I, I'd forgotten about it. You I mean Big know. Love, I think it was called? No, that or uh, Sister Wives or something. Oh, oh, that, oh that, that was more recent. I don't know. I never watched that. Yeah, you know, never watch that. But uh, I just, uh, you know, I mean, uh, and when it comes to the Supreme Court, you know, I think there, uh, who is this? Uh, who is this woman? Uh, the Republican woman kind of talks funny. She sounds Collins. Um, uh, Collins, Susan Collins. Maine. Uh, is she's they, yeah, not they really a Republican. Well, uh, yes, yeah, she is. I do. She has yeah, she's not a Republican in, in your mind Just because, because she, she doesn't. Just because she voted twice with us does not make her a goddamn Democrat. Right. Makes oh, it her. Makes it, no, it makes her open minded, is what it does. Uh, the and and, I, I, and you, I, I know you as a Republican don't want any open minded uh, people. Women. Uh, <gasps> you know, uh, An open minded woman. Yeah. But anyway, women. Susan Collins said that she, would, she will say to okay. whoever Trump's uh, nominee is the same thing she said to Merrick. Merritt Garland when she interviewed him and that was uh, how do you feel about precedent uh, because Roe v. Wade is precedent now and uh, would you vote okay. against precedent and if, they, if he says uh, yeah, uh, yes I could find myself voting against precedent she said then I won't, uh, I won't support him yes uh, Patrick I think uh, I think the only people on the list for Trump should be women, and the reason being, one, it'll shut women up, and no. two, make women, hold on, Phil, it'll make women uncomfortable the same way as having a female Secretary of State go into an uh, Arab country and make them uncomfortable in the Middle East because of all of their laws and mores and and all of that so i i oh but she she re, she on the other hand though uh patrick uh, hillary clinton respected them when she went to those countries yeah, she uh, by the way if you're going to use the white glove it has to be on your hand it can't okay. be sitting there well, like a condom I like a used condom clinton's thomas uh, they they said oh well you're putting a black on the supreme court now how did the left Look at Clarence Thomas. Well, as a guy, as a guy who, who had such good eyesight, he could see a pubic hair on a coke bottle. Well, you know, he was just making sure she didn't swallow it. But uh, yeah, you know, boy, that's not misogynistic in any way, shape, or form. No. And by the way, Patrick, uh, Trump's list is already out. What? He made a list prior to all of this shit, and he's sticking. With, yeah, and he's sticking to those names. Yeah. yeah. Is Merrick Garland on there? No, Judge Judy is on there, oh, and uh, there. Judge uh, Judge Wapner. Well, he's dead now, so yes, yes Patrick. And, yes, and I mean, Bill, Bill made a great point with with Clown Thomas. I mean, I think that that was a great pick to make everybody uncomfortable on that too. I mean, it was, got, no, we, but no, so uh, okay, the we didn't have a problem with Clarence Thomas. Oh either. yeah. Being so black, it it's the same thing with that Haskell woman who who is now this in charge of the CIA. It, the value they're just sheep people, and if that's what you want, that's exactly what you got in in Clarence Thomas, and that's exactly which is an Uncle Tom, and that's exactly what you got for her. See? It's an Uncle Tom. See? Well, uh, well look, it, 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 it's not enough that he was black. I, totally no, I will have I will have to take you to task on something here. You're making an automatic assumption 
that because Trump yes. thought they were a good idea, they're necessarily going to be sheep. No, you know. no. So she, we already know that she 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 set up the torture site. She found the torture site. She set up the torture ah. site. She was something with the torture site. Then she was, was told ah. to destroy all of the papers, and she destroyed it all. So that's pretty much a sheep. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Pat, Patrick is giving his, what What are you talking about? Go ahead, he, Patrick. He, Patrick. It, 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 the, so what? I mean, it was, at the time, it was legal. It's, it's, and it's then, really just, it, we, we agreed to live by rules that time, we all agreed I, I, I agree with Patrick on this people. one, that at the time, it was something that while it was not moral, okay, it was right. legal, it was no one told them you can't do that. But we okay. agreed to live by those rules, and and this torture is outside of those rules. Nevertheless, yeah. she was not the person who was a leader at the CIA. Somebody had to give the go-ahead and ask her to do what she did. She and she simply took her, her, took her marching orders. Now, maybe we don't want somebody who's going to take marching orders, but rather say, I cannot do that. It is morally reprehensible. But unfortunately, that's not she what we got. You know, that's right. not what we got. So, and the whole thing about Clarence Thomas, Clarence Thomas happens to be the whole fact that we didn't have a problem with him being black. We had a problem with him being a Bill Clinton pervert. And by the way, who's seen Bill Clinton since somebody slammed him with Monica Lewinsky? Not a person, not been on TV, haven't seen the bastard. What's that? He who's got this? slammed big time on that book tour. Who's this? And who's this? Bill Clinton. Bill oh, Clinton. Oh, Bill Clinton? Yeah. yeah, we haven't seen hide nor hair of his ass. No, well, that's not true. He was with uh, George Because he was on The Daily Show just the other night. Yeah, and he was with George H. Bush the other day. Yeah, and he, uh, he was, uh, he, uh, he's had this book tour going around with, uh, who's the guy who he wrote it with, uh, the big author. And right. uh, and he was on James he was Patterson. on sixty minutes and he was on I saw him on several shows where they all talked to him about Monica Lewinsky. He was out flacking a book and the, the other author is sitting next to him just kinda looking quizzical because he liked to talk about the book. And but but to his credit, Clinton answered the questions in one case pretty badly. Okay. Correct. Um, you did. Poorly. But poorly, just, but but the next the time the day, next time he went on, he he learned his lesson, you know. Just the other day, George H. W. Bush got a service dog, and Clinton was there, uh, and they were palling around. Uh, this is a news clip where the two people were talking, or he was being interviewed. No, no, no. They were just sitting there together, uh, uh, playing with the dog, and uh, and I guess uh, Clinton. And H. W. Bush are close friends. And, and Clinton was on the on the on the Colbert show. On all these shows, he was asked okay. about. On all these thought, shows, he was asked about Lewinsky. On every one of them. I thought he was dropped as at last. No, week. no. Well, no. He may be not on tour anymore for the book. You know, you do that for about two weeks, and then, you know, all of a sudden, where you were never available for shows, you're available for two weeks, and people take you like crazy, and then you're back home. You know waiting for the royalties to come in on the book, you know. So, I mean, but, he, no, he, he was not unavailable. Uh, I thought last week, once once he started the Monica Lewinsky, or no, once they no. started asking the, him. From the get-go, from the first interview they ever did with him, which was on, uh, I believe, was it CBS Sunday Morning? I believe that was the show that he was on. From that show onward, uh, uh, that was the beginning of the book tour, he kept answering questions. There were always questions about Monica Lewinsky because they were saying, well, there's the Me Too movement. How do you feel about what happened with Monica Lewinsky? Blah, 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 blah. And I, I, in, I saw at least three interviews in a row where he was asked about it, and he answered the questions, okay? So you're really wrong. He didn't dodge uh, the Monica Lewinsky issue, and he did not not go on tour to sell the book, so... I felt was sorry for. I can try remember, I'm trying to remember the writer that he wrote it with, who obviously James didn't. Patterson. Uh, yeah, Patterson. He, I felt bad for him because he's sitting next to him, and he wants to sell the book. He's there to sell the book, and people are asking him about uh, Monica Lewinsky, and then Patterson jumped in and gave his own take on the thing. 
So he got political on all these uh, interviews too. But th that's uh, he, you're wrong. He was out there, and people were. So when I, the yeah. interviews. I saw three interviews, and the three that I saw, James Patterson was like. Yeah, well, for the most part, it, well, hey, if if uh, uh, um, it sounds like a like a joke, like two Jews walk into a room. If two people walk into a room, one of them is an author and one of them is Bill Clinton, and you're the interviewer, who are you going to talk to? Okay, you know. So okay, he just looked a little like I, I don't want to be in this. And I storm. think he realized that that was going to be his lot in life on this book tour. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Patrick. Hello, yeah, I, Tony. Yeah. So there, uh, uh, we saw the same one with Renee, and it looked like James Patterson swallowed a turd. And <laughs> that's what I thought. I think those first few interviews, he was not expecting that. And then you're right, Alex, after that, he just figured, well, shit, this is three in a row on three different networks. I guess this is going to be the way it's going to be. Well, but I mean. The first one, yeah. it looked like somebody either farted or he shit his own pants, and it, it was the same for the next two. If on my little show here they said, hey, James Patterson or whatever his name is, and uh, and and Bill Clinton want to be on the show, but you have to take both of them because they both wrote the book together and they're here on a book tour, right? I'd go, yes, and then they'd sit here and I'd say, so what about Monica Lewinsky, Bill? You know, I mean, immediately... Bill Clinton is the person that you normally can't lay your hands on because this author you can lay your hands on all of the time. Anytime he's got a new book, he's out flacking it, you know? So mm -hmm. that's the reason why I think Patterson felt so out of place in all these interviews. He's he, still a pervert. No, he's not. You don't think Bill Clinton's a pervert? No, I don't. No. Go ahead. No. I, I, really, I really, I really don't. I think he's, think I, I, I think he's a man who let his dick talk for him. You know, I think he's a guy who, uh, who was pursued by a young woman and should have said no. But he didn't. Uh, which, which young woman are we talking about? Are we talking about uh, Monica the, Lewinsky? Well, yeah, Lewinsky. okay, okay. Now the only woman I ever talked to that fucked, uh, Bill Clinton, uh, Flowers. was uh, Jennifer Flowers. Jennifer. And uh, she was on my show, and she kept saying during the interview, you know, I really did have sex with Bill Clinton. And I went, and finally, after she did this a couple of times, I, I went, I, I understand that, and I believe you. I believe you had sex with Bill Clinton. But did you the ask question, her if she wanted to have sex with Alex Bennett? No. <laughs> uh, and I asked her, but then I asked her the question. I said, that's not what's important to me. What's important to me was, was he a gentleman? And she said, he was terrific. She said, the next, the, every time we'd have sex, the next day he would call and see if I was okay. Uh, he never dodged my calls if I wanted to call him. He was an absolute gentleman. So how do you answer that one, Renee? Uh, he's grabby and we've seen Oh, him well, wait a minute. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you what somebody him. who has had Bill Clinton inside her had to say about him. He's grabby. We've got. We've seen, no. We've he. Got, he how's he? How's he grabby? Grab. We're not talking about grabby. I and, never. I never saw him grabbing you're people. Pervert, and you're talking about one person that fucked him when he before. Wait, he wait a minute. Wait a minute. Grabby. Have you ever seen hey. photographs of him being grabby with anybody? No. But I know that he hit up on an intern uh, in his office with a cigar. No. No. Wait a minute. The intern hit up on him, Phil. Well, it takes two to ten. No, no, wait a minute. Hold on. The 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 intern hit up on him, uh, hit up on him, and she will she will admit to that. She said as much. Uh, but he should not have been so weak willed that he didn't say this is a bad idea. Yeah, I'm the you president know. of the United States. I can't well, do this. Well, yeah, yes, and Trump should now get that message too. But apparently, he doesn't know what he should <laughs> should say. I'm president of the United States, and I shouldn't be acting the way I'm acting. Ah, it's a sticks and stones thing. No, it's not. Now you're taking the other. Oh, it's okay when it's Trump. Yeah. You know. But all I'm saying, uh, Renee, is, is that I, I don't think Bill Clinton was the bad guy you think he is. I think he was stupid. I think he was, uh, 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 he, he shouldn't have, even if he was being tempted, you know. And uh, you know, and he was go he was going through middle age, and you had a, a, young, a young girl coming on to you like that. You're, you're, you get a little weak-willed. 
you know. We were warned during, during his first uh, run for president, mm-hmm. which he won, uh, that when he was governor of Arkansas, mm-hmm. that he had uh, 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 Arkansas police officers, state police officers, going, getting his women, uh, dropping them off, bringing them over. The guy is a hound dog. And uh, and he, you know, we were warned. This is this was his way of doing things. So was I, Phil, and I. All I did was send you to go get them. <laughs> Maybe Phil comes back for lunch. <laughs> that makes you a pimp. That makes you a pimp, Phil. <laughs> no, most of the time I went and got the coke. Yeah. <laughs> you a know. big hat. I mean. Uh, it, uh, all I'm uh, uh, all I'm saying, I mean, I have to say, you know, Bill Clinton was very, you know, being considering what he was, which president of the United States, he was being very uh, stupid about it. And uh, uh, he should not have done that. And it was a bad thing he did. Uh, and I think he will probably admit it to you that, you know, he shouldn't have. But I don't think, uh, quite frankly, that. Um, it's as bad as Trump with these women and getting them to shut up by paying them off, you know, and that kind of deal. And the woman who was Hillary, who, Hillary and Foster, the, 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 the playboy playmate uh, who was literally in love with him, and he said he loved her too. And then all of a sudden, he's not available to her, but uh, she's getting a deal from the National Enquirer to write an article which they were going to pay her at him and then never run the article you know oh, that kind of bullshit. Funny? yeah and her, she, her, she was devastated by the way she was treated by trump devastated yeah, I, that's sad yeah that poor thing that thinks that that piece of shit uh, is something we should love you know i i think that she might have been a little delusion no i don't think there was delusion she there with the guy uh, and the guy was she, interested she in went more. with the guy for 9 months phil that is not in just mind, going with a guy no it's, no it's, it's documented it is it is documented phil yeah it, it's, it's so it be no, so no, it is. no why is she delusional why it is written. her story is is the most creditable of all the stories that i've heard you know she, i mean she, she had days times whenever and and she could she could actually prove it the only reason she didn't get the same kind of um, juice that stormy daniels got was because number one stormy daniels was a porn star so people want to hear about that okay and secondly because with the stormy daniels thing there was a uh a collusion to uh, obstruct justice okay whereas in the case so of the play says. in the case of the playmate uh there wasn't a case of obstructing justice Oh uh, no! Didn't they offer her a deal and then they didn't give it a deal? No, uh, no, no. Here, no, here's what happened. Yeah, here's what it happened. Was, uh, the magazine interceded, uh, uh, no, said the, that they were going to pay her so much that they were going to exactly. give her these articles, and then had her sign a release saying that she would not sell her story to anybody else. And then they buried it. And then buried it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that collusion? Uh, I think it is. Yes. If your intent is to keep her shut up because you're running for president. Well, it was the National Enquirer. Yes, that, but the National Enquirer were friends with Donald Trump and were doing it for Donald Trump. Okay, so he's guilty by association. Not guilty by association, <laughs> guilty because they were doing it for him. Yes, uh, yes, Renee. So yesterday you guys didn't talk about the union thing that happened. Kevin, you want to talk about it? I love it. Finally, the union people aren't going to be affected by the thugs that run these unions oh, and Jesus almighty. Uh, yeah, have you, have you ever met a, an official in my fucking union? Not in your you union. You couldn't even in, begin uh, to call members of the Screen Pointers Actors Guild thugs. Yes, okay. I, I've met them out of, uh, you know, the, uh, out of Brooklyn. They only, the, the only thing, they, the only time they've been thugs is when they've had to play one on TV. Okay? That, that's, that's my true. union. My they union is such show a... show up in the parking lot with oh. shotguns. Uh, oh, you know, I remember in the 70s, uh, early 70s, late 60s, when my father had to deal with these guys. Uh, you were dealing you know. with them in New York. In New York, you, you're dealing with mobsters on just exactly. about anything. And yeah, but they, they wore the union label. Well. 
But they wore any label. No, they wore not, any label. I know part, guys. I know right. guys who tried to distribute their magazines on the streets of New York without dealing with the mob, and they got into a lot of had a lot of problems. You know, and that that wasn't a union situation. It's just uh, the what, mob. What? The mob at a point in time in this city controlled everything. Yeah. Would and you agree, unions. Jeff? Would you agree, Jeff? Absolutely. Yeah. And including the. I, I used to work. And the mob guy sat right next to me every day. And what he did was gambling. And he told me, he says, yeah, I'm in the mob. And uh, that's that's who I work for. Yeah. Uh, and so there's no doubt about it. I'm sorry, would you all agree that the middle class of America was built off of uh, the GI Bill and then also off of the strength of the union workers? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, yes, <laughs> Phil. Yes, Phil. You have no sense of history. So <laughs> you have no sense of history. I mean, unions came into being because unions needed to exist. You know, I, I mean... There were some terrible working uh, conditions. Uh, there were some there terrible some working conditions, conditions and, the, and, and I agree with you if you want to say the unions solved that, and they became a very important force for the worker until they became too big, and then they started, get, they started losing the faith that uh, they had they became you know. the force for the union not for the worker well they cared more about the per uh, the, per the union Power. existing existing rather than the worker and right. and that's what i found was a problem with unions but now uh, in this country unions don't exist like they used to so you know they're I'm, not going to exist anymore uh, and they might not exist anymore if 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 somebody can get a job get wages that were set by the union with the employers and not have to pay dues. Well, the problem is that they also contribute to political machines. No, forget about that. Forget about that. We can get into that later, but so, 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 yeah, but, but yeah, and so do a lot of people like, uh, you know, the, what do you call it, brothers, the Koch brothers and so on for the other side. So don't give me the unions control that. We're defeated. Patrick wants to say Yes, Patrick. I've got two different well, Patrick, you had something you want to say? Yeah, he's saying. Um, I've got two different perspectives. Oh, Patrick. On the, yeah. I, I thought you meant uh, 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 okay. Tony. Tony. Oh, yeah, I have something to say after Patrick. Oh, okay. Patrick, yeah. then Tony. Who, well, who's first? You, I, I can wait. Go for, go for Patrick, it. you're number one. Okay. Um, so when my grandfather was <laughs> in the union... That was during their, their 50s and the 60s when they needed people to make sure that the companies weren't getting too big for their bridges. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandpa was a proud union member and made sure that, you know, whatever needed to be done with strikes and that, that was fine. My stepfather was a teamster for... I want to say near 20 years mm -hmm. and started out kind of the same way where the union was looking out for the worker mm -hmm. and then my stepdad got injured and could not work in a warehouse job anymore and had to leave the union and they left him high and dry yeah. and told him go fuck yourself Yep. And he's gotten jack shit yep. from them. And that's when I turned against the idea of union because I want what happened with my grandfather and with my stepdad early on. And I was, I lived in a union household. And I also want my mother get spurred by her own teacher's union, where when she started out working, um, they were very much in her corner, so to speak. But because she was not a full teacher, she was uh, an aide or whatever, mm -hmm. they started dividing up um, what the benefits were going to be without consulting with the aide. So the, the union bosses would take care of everybody without asking people like my mother what they wanted out of whatever negotiation. Mm -hmm. So my mother was forced to retire early because they couldn't get their shit together. 
and they fought two over just as well. So I'm not union because I've seen the bad side of it, and nobody's going to convince me okay. otherwise. I also to, 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 Tony, Tony is Tony. Tony is yeah. next, and then Kevin has his hand up, and then I have something I want to say about unions, but it can wait. Tony. Yeah, you know, here's the one thing that I think that the union is really was really good for, and I think I think uh, she might have said it before too, is that it's the rate per hour. If you really didn't have a union setting like a hourly wage. These companies really, I'm not saying all these companies, but for the most part, they don't want to give even cost of living raises out. It's, I see, you know what I'm saying? You need to have a set pay scale. I think the union pushed for that, really, or set some kind of baseline. Like, Alex, yeah. if there was no union, how do you think the pay would be for these small companies for us if you had no union at all? Well, if you had no union at all, I think that they would try and get away as cheaply as they possibly could. I think that, for instance, like... Uh, well, at uh, Sirius XM, which is, I guess, a place I'm knowledgeable about, there is no union there. The, the union was never able to grab hold over there, so they never had sag after in there. And they're paying people bi abysmal money to be on the air there. I mean, just absolutely pathetic wages. I mean, come on. You know, you're doing a four-hour show a day, and you're getting $35,000 a year? In this economy, in New York City, you out of your fucking mind? But they're getting away with it. Because it's hey, you want to work in radio? Well, we got a lot of radio jobs here. You got to, you know, well, yes, you got to take what thing. we give you. Um, yes, G Kevin, you wanted to say something. It, it also depends on where you're at. Now, I, what what Patrick just explained is exactly how I got through where I was working in my career. I always avoided being in the Teamsters. The trucking union was, in the, at least in this area. I know in other areas it was different, but in my area. It was always a piece of shit. Uh, it was the same thing. It was, uh, they always, from what I know, and I hung around with people that were in the union, there were always, the the, the bargaining was the shit. Mm -hmm. They never took care of their people. Right. The, the union hall was always uh, empty mm -hmm. because nobody wanted to, you know, they didn't have a good union hall. The guys were always not, even the, the leaders weren't even there. And I always made a wage that was comparable, not exactly at union wage, but it was comparable mm -hmm. to a union wage, and I had benefits. So I, I, I didn't need to be in the union. And I, I didn't have to pay dues and all that other crap. Right. Well, and so I, I, was, I was able to get by without being in the union. The unions got weak in the 70s and the 80s. In, at least in this area. Well, in my, in, with, with my union, there are virtually very few radio stations that are unionized anymore. I mean, when and you... It when, also depends on the industry, well, listen, too. When, I, when you, you know, I have when, to admit, there's when, other areas when, that... When you came, and there was a okay, time well, let me, let me talk about let me, let me talk about my history. To begin with, let me say that uh, there was a time in New York City where if you went to work at a station in New York City, you, you had to be a member of the union. That was all there was no to it. Uh, because every one of them were unionized. And uh, yeah. the proudest day of my life was, I think, when I first went to Chicago and the station there, which was owned by Westinghouse, I had to join the union. And I felt, for the first time in my life, wow, I've really become a professional. You know, I, I've really, I, I'm now part of, the, of, of, of AFTRA, which was, it was kind of a rite of passage for me. And one of the reasons I like the union so much was because I grew up in a union household. My father was a member of the Musicians' Union. I used to, as a child, spend my time at the union headquarters in the bar downstairs. My father would be having drinks with friends, and I'd be eating beef jerky because that's all a little kid could do in the bar because they had a really great bar in the, in the basement of the, uh, of the Musicians' Union. So I grew up around a, u a union household, and my father always told me, Unions are good because, you know, especially in my profession, uh, without the union, we would be getting crap wages. And uh, because we're artists and, and, and we need to be represented. And so I spent my whole life being positive towards unions, even towards uh, AFTRA, which then became SAG AFTRA, which at one point screwed me over like crazy on a couple of occasions. And I could sit here like the rest of you and say, I hate them because look what, how they screwed me over. 
but for the most part, at the end of my life, SAG after has turned out to be a godsend for me. Yeah, you know, yeah. so uh, I mean, I I had a job at the WMCA in New York the second time around, and I was just happy to have any kind of job. And they decided that they were going to uh, 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 take me off my show, but rather than fire me, they said we're gonna we'll have you do newscasts. So they put me in the newsroom, and the union heard this and said, "You can't do that. You can't take a guy who was on the air like that and move him over to the over to the newscast." So uh, WMCA just fired me. <laughs> you know, because of their intervention. Yeah. I kept saying to them, look, I don't mind. I just want to see the money coming in. I don't mind doing a newscast. No, we can't have this happen. Otherwise, they'll do it to everybody else. And mm -hmm. I wound up out of a job because uh, they were playing their union, uh, playing, uh, holding their union dick out. Uh, and yeah. so I could sit here and be mad at unions, but no... I, I have to, t and I also felt earlier on in my life when I was here in New York that the unions didn't care about their younger members. They only cared about the guys who were sitting in the announce booths. And every time it was time for everybody to get a raise, it was the guys sitting in the announce booth going, Channel 7, New York, you know, every half hour uh, at $125,000 a year. And we get like a $5 an hour raise. You know, so I have every reason to be mad at unions, and for some reason, I absolutely adore unions and think they've made my life better in the end. Ask. Let me, yes, let me throw in this that's really yeah. interesting that happened today down here at the, uh, what they call AgCon down here in Salinas. Yeah. They actually uh, just signed uh, the field workers to a union down here. Mm -hmm. They're, the field workers are now unionized down here in uh, Salinas with one of the big uh, one of the big farming companies a uh, Diag Diag Diagli Diagala or something like that yeah and they're all getting full benefits so that they can keep these guys up here which I think is pretty cool so they must not hire any illegals uh, nope they're not hiring any illegals they're letting these guys come up they're getting them full medical benefits they're getting a decent wage and I and I think that's actually good you know, I mean, uh, that's not that never happens yeah. around here. Uh, when you talked about the Teamsters, we've always known the Teamsters were incredibly corrupt in their time. I don't know oh, if yeah. it still holds true any longer, but it certainly was back then. Well, and what I was saying is, that I was with a, a five five guys uh, driving trucks in a company, and we used to go have coffee every morning mm -hmm. at the bowling alley across the street from the union hall, and all those guys were drinking coffee right across the booth from us. And the hall leader used to come over to our table and bug us about joining the union all the time. He never gave us a bad time. He'd say, oh, you guys ought to come over. And he'd sit down and talk to us and stuff. But he never bugged us. And it well, was, you know, you, you we know, almost were in the union, but we weren't. I mean, my father being a musician, I mean, the musicians union wasn't what you call a bunch of thugs. I mean, these are guys with violins and oboes. Uh, yes, Patrick. Yeah. You could probably beat Phil with it. Yeah, beat Phil with it. <laughs> and yeah. and watch the gang my a violin yeah. case to carry their machine guns. Mm. I'll break your legs. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna give us ten percent of your take, Phil. Yeah. yeah. How how would you how would you like your VU meters not to work as fast yeah. anymore? Uh, I, I, I've had some nails thrown in my tires too. Yeah. But, yeah. Patrick uh, had. Go ahead, yeah. Patrick. Like with with the teamster, like in in my family. The biggest issue happened after my stepdad did not want to drop out of the union. He just could no longer do a union job, and they ostracized him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, it, it was like he never existed. And all of his union brothers that said, hey, we're, we're here for you, we're, we're that, uh, not a one of them. I mean, and he'd been... Um, why well, he's retired now, but yeah. he didn't hear from any of them for 15 years while he would force to work in the office uh, at the company he worked at. And he would see these guys and, you know, hey, how you, they, it was like he never existed. Okay. Hey, that, yeah. You know, Alex, well, well, Alex over at Sirius, he's still waiting for his lunch. Listen, I'm still waiting for a paycheck from WOR here in New York because they weren't union anymore, and I worked in, uh, on two occasions. Never never sent me a check. Never never even called me up to say, where do we send the check? 
You know, so that's what happens when you don't have unions uh, in places. But let me, let me take it. Let's go back to the original thing mm. that Renee was talking about. And the fact that is it right for a person to work, have a union go to work for them, to get more money in their workplace, and take that money, that, that raise that unions got them, okay, and then not have to pay union dues for that? You know, is, is that right? Uh, there's a service being provided here, and it's not being reciprocated. I, I thought if a workplace was union, you had to be in the union to work there. How could they have non-union guys working there? Well, they didn't say that, that that comes to an end. What it just said was is that people who didn't want to pay union dues, didn't want to be a part of the union. No, uh, it, it, their dues can't go to political uh, no, no, they, well, it wasn't that, but they also couldn't collect dues if people didn't want to pay them. It doesn't really no. mess up arguing. No, that's not what I, no, I believe. Well, they, but no, you got it wrong, Phil. Say goodbye to the unions. Uh, 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 Renee, what, did it, what was the decision? And then we'll go to Patrick. It doesn't matter. Just say goodbye to the unions. No, no, uh, but no, no, no. This, but I'm not this, asking you that. I'm asking you okay. what was in the decision yesterday. I'm going to look it up. Okay, let him look it up. Yeah, he'll go look it up at like uh, uh, glennbeck.com. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yes, Beth. We want to know your source, Phil. <laughs> uh, Google. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Patrick. No, I well let. I, what I was going to add to it is my understanding was that those who did not pay also um, had a choice of whether or not they wanted to bargain on their own separate from the union so that they did not take advantage of the union benefits while not paying dues. That's something well, that's here, here, that's here's the thing, though. I, I, I don't think that's right. Let's no, let's no. think for a moment about collective bargaining and what it really is all about. There are certain jobs, carpet installers, who really, you know, a guy can't c go to Phil and go, you know, I'm your best carpet installer. I want a raise. Yeah, he can. He can say it, but you're not going to give him the raise based on that. He doesn't have bar. I feel he, if he threatens to go to the next guy, he he he, ha he doesn't really have bargaining power, Phil. And the reason why unions existed was that it gave the individuals as a group bargaining power. Okay, uh, you know, if you were a steel worker, what are you going to do? I'm the best steel worker you got. Well, uh, fuck you. Go. Well, that's, you know, that's what. That's what you see. That's the problem with unions. They mm -hmm. claim they're the best, but these guys are sitting on their ass 90 percent of the time. The guy who is the best is going to be working whether he's in the union or not. Nah, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. What they'll do is uh, they'll, 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 I don't know about uh, that. You, I, you don't I agree with that. You, you don't have bargaining power. You know. Yes, Jeff. Okay. Well, I I had a a union job at uh, one time, and I was just totally depressed with the whole union strategy. It didn't do any benefit for me. Yeah. Uh, I think I had to pay a certain amount, uh, which was not such a big deal. The amount of money that I was making was the same. I was offered by a whole bunch of other companies at the same uh, rate. And uh, I didn't realize that when I took the job that I had to be a union member. Uh, and. And quite frankly, anytime I discussed anything with the union people, they were basically no, no, we don't want to do that. Let me, let me, let me, let, let, so I was, yeah. I was pretty pissed off with that. Let me say that, 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 that let me say this: that uh, yeah. uh, ever since I worked in New York, I never had to work when I left New York for union operation ever again. Okay, a union radio station. And I, for those years, all those years, kept my uh, membership active in the in 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 after, which then became SAG after. And the reason I did it was this: I believed in unions, and I believe they should exist because, yes, I had bargaining power. I could go into somebody and say, "I want a hundred thousand dollars more a year because I'm making you so much money." and I'm going to leave you if I don't, and they cough up the money. 
Right. But the newswoman who was sitting next to me doing my news in the morning didn't have that bargaining power. Now, I gave mine bargaining power by saying, if you want me to sign a contract, you got to sign one with her first and gave her bargaining power. But unions would have given the people working around me much more bargaining power that they didn't <coughs> have that I had. But I was so I, I maintained my membership with the union for all those years. Lucky I did because now I'm getting my SAG after you know insurance. Uh, but uh, you know I I just I believe in the in the spirit and the reason for a union to exist, and I believe I, I, I just believe in it. It depends on the industry because I've always seen you know in, in a in a labor intensive uh, industry. Mm -hmm. You can have five guys that work their asses off, and you can have five guys that don't do shit, and they still get paid the same. Yeah. Let me talk for a moment, as long as I mention steel workers. Yes, yes, Phil has his glove up. Boy, is that getting obnoxious. Yes. Yeah. That was the idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is that a tribute to Joe Jackson? No, no it's a tribute no. to minstrel <laughs> shows. <laughs> the other gloves. Yeah, the other day. Yeah. yeah. No, the, this is one of those gloves you use to touch photographs. But uh, okay. uh, New York Times. Mm -hmm. You want the New York Times? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, it says here that um, workers who chose not to join unions may not be required. Oh, government workers who chose not right. to join unions right. may not be required to help pay for collective bargaining. Yeah, this was about yeah. government workers. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Forcing those workers to finance union activity violated the First Amendment. That's uh, that's what the majority wrote. Bullshit. So, it's uh, bullshit. Well, hey, that's that's what the majority wrote. Samuel Alito uh, wrote for the majority. He concluded that the arrangement the violates... Majority, it was a majority, right? Phil, members. Phil. When you say majority, you think like, oh, everybody in the Supreme Court agreed well, with this. it was 5-4. 5-4. Five, four. Five, four. Uh, all right. So he said that free speech rights of non-members by compelling them to subsidize private speech on matters of substantial public concern. So... Uh, so basically, they were uh, protecting the rights of the non-union members and uh, their First Amendment rights. That's all. Uh, no, and members who did not, people who did not want to be a member of the union. Right, but these are government. But they would go to work for the government and be getting wages that existed because they had been negotiated by unions. By the not very right. unions they didn't want to pay dues to. Yes, but they have a right. But no, uh, but uh, uh, they bullshit uh, with the right. The fact is, those unions got them the wage they're going to get. So you're going to continue to pay off forever, huh? huh? So the question happens to be is if the middle class of America is built off of unions and also off the education backs of our military, what do you think our middle class is going to look like? My, my life was better when I was a kid because of my father's union, you know. We won't have a middle class. Seventy years ago, that was the case. We will not have a middle class. It's going to be a two-class country. We don't have a middle class now. It is a two-class country. It's called those in government and everybody else. No, it's called those who have money and everybody else. Yeah, well, yes. the only ones that have money are the government people. No, no, no. The government people don't have mm -hmm. the big money. The big money goes to those people who, who are in the top 1%, uh, and those people are controlling most of the country. Uh, yeah. Let me, let me, uh, yes. But yeah. Alex, yeah. aren't you one of those one percenters? <laughs> not really, no, I'm not. Uh, well, hardly. maybe not now, but I, I was, I, 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 no, I was never one of the one percenters. It, to be a one percenter, I'd have to be making several million dollars a year, you know. We were. Or, or over a million a year, you know, and I never made over a million a year. Um, I wish I had, you know. That, Seventy-five thousand here. But uh, uh, you know, and right now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pinching every penny. I, I when they, when AT and T wants to charge me more than I think they should be charging me, I'm calling them. But then again, I at my age, I have the time. And a glove. Uh, yeah. Yeah, know, yeah, Kevin's got Skittles, and I want the Skittles, Kevin. <laughs> Okay. Let me let me mention yeah, something else yeah. that happened today, which is kind of interesting. It was brought up, I think, in a speech last night. I just found him. The President of the United States is prone to absolute, unequivocal lying. Oh, big time. Okay. Uh, and uh, I don't know. He. I think what it is, he's delusional. 
Okay. <laughs> I, I think I think I think no, it isn't fake news. Here's what he said last night. He told an audience that he was speaking to. Uh, I think this well, may uh, have been the speech he was giving at uh, was no so the, like in North Dakota something like that. Anyway, he said today I uh, I heard from uh, United States Steel and they are going to be building seven new plants here in America. Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah, and. Uh, United States Steel, when asked about it by news organizations, said the only time we ever announce that we're going to be building something new is we put out a tweet on it. The fact is we don't have any intention of building seven new steel plants. Uh, there, is, well, there is one steel place that we have reopened uh, and restoked the fires in it, but outside of that, we, we have said nothing about opening up seven. Uh, so well, where yeah. Trump got this idea, it's the same place he got the idea that Apple was going to invest $320 billion in America when all Apple did was say, now that we can do it, we're bringing $320 billion back here to sit in our banks. Well, yep. uh, you know, one plant was a Diefenbachia, the other was a wandering Jew, then a ficus yeah, tree. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But uh, all joking aside, the man is fucking delusional. He where he picked this figure out of his ass. Well, he had to get it from and somewhere. Foxconn is going to be half of Wisconsin too. And also, you yeah, you you do know about well, Foxconn. Hold on a Fox. second. How much yeah. money is the state of Wisconsin investing? I heard. In Foxconn being there, what kind of tax breaks are they getting, and all of that? They say it's going to take 25 years for Wisconsin to recover the money that they're 20, going to be spending. This women and Patrick knows this. It's going to take that long to get the money back, and there's no guarantee that they're going to employ anybody because Foxconn has said publicly they would like to have all their plants automated and not have to use human beings in putting together these phones. Yes, Patrick. But Trump is guaranteeing 13,000 jobs. Yes, and they're saying they're, that they have gone on record as saying any new plants they were going to build, they were going to try and build fully automated plants. Yep. Yes, Patrick. If you ever had employees, you'd want that too. It's going to take 25 years, 20 years to recover. It's no different than the sports arena that we've had built here that I bet you about continuing. Well, I mean, I, I agreed with you on those. The difference here for me is they the point of potentially 13,000 people. But that's a lie. A trade off, even if it takes 20 years to pay off that um, investment, yeah. it's a better investment to me than a sports arena that you only have, let's say... Okay, look, Patrick, I agree with you about the sports arena, but uh, it's already a known fact that Foxconn, who may not even build, okay, uh, there's some questions as to whether they're even going to wind up building it, uh, is, a, is, a, is an absolute corrupt Chinese company uh, in which the the system is so bad in those places that they had to put they had to put nets up around their buildings so people wouldn't jump out of them. Okay, this is Foxconn. We're talking. Wasn't the about. last one in in on the East Coast that was supposed to bring that much, almost that much, and it never uh, got built. Five hundred employees or something, and it never got built. Yeah, never got built. So if this one gets built, I'll be amazed. If it does, it, there's going to be nobody working in it. It's all going to be machines putting stuff together and a few people operating those. Yes, Patrick. There's already a few small buildings. Up. Yeah, that, but that doesn't, that's not a full company. And Foxconn has yeah. been known to make these promises before and then not deliver on them. As, well, you, well, as you say, they were supposed to build one out here on the East Coast, and it's yet to be built. Well, we'll see. I mean, uh, so far, so good. I, I don't see Well, so far, next. so far, it's all talk. Uh, the East Coast robot unions wanted too much money in their collective bargaining, so they had to go to Wisconsin. 
Put the coffee of, down. As, as, as speaking of which, this isn't coffee, it's tea. It's for closers, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what was I going to say now? I, I had something I was going to say about uh, that. I, when you guys started talking about Fox, uh, the new communications director for Trump yeah. is coming out of Fox. Yeah, is the guy who, who had, to leave, had to leave Fox with uh, Roger Ailes because he aided and embedded Roger Ailes in his bad deeds. That's and, the kind and, and of so guy. We rewarded by putting him in our government. Yeah, so we rewarded him by putting him in our government. Well, he needed a job, you know. Yeah, well, you know what? I bet there's a bunch of Hispanic people that need a job that have better morals and values than that jackass does. But they can't communicate. And neither can he, obviously. Well, no, he. It was he, his. It was his for, lack of communication that got him in trouble. Yeah. He wouldn't rat on the on ales. Well, that's that's a good. You know, I don't like rats. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Oh boy. What am I going to uh -huh. do with you, Phil? Uh, yeah. I have a public service now. I hope that stent puts more blood into your brain, and all of a sudden you you <laughs> start seeing will. the the. You know, that, that's probably where the fog is coming from. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, When's your surgery, Phil? Uh, July fifth. And and it's just a stent, right? It's not a pacemaker and a stent. It's just no a pacemaker. The heart's fine. Uh, it's a uh, angioplasty. Uh, well, they go in. Is it at the balloon? Huh? Is that, that the balloon? Yeah. Yeah, the balloon. Uh, and then and, uh, and they can make, make little balloon the... doggies in there. And, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, uh, and, and they and... stick some sort of stent in there. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then they pull out and they send me home. Jeff, that, that's kind of like you on dates, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Are we still using plastic stents? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't know if they changed to another fabric because they were trying to keep it from closing down. Jeff, would, Jeff, would, get Jeff, the stent Jeff. that uh, they on late night. <sighs> the lawyers will say if you had this stent yeah, uh, plus yeah, yeah. A, this no, Je number. Jeff Jeff maybe knows a bit about this uh, I think I think the answer is there's multiple materials that are available and just because some people change what they like to use when I say they I'm talking about the doctors who make those decisions uh, that changes all the time but, well uh, the more technology we gain I would think Pretty soon well, getting, you, learn, getting, you learn from the experience, yeah. and uh, and some of the materials that used to be a great idea are not so good. And yeah. that doesn't mean that you're going to take the one out that, you, that you've had it for 20 years. Right. If it's still Probably working, up, you'll, you'll stick with it. The lead pipe. <laughs> it's all the McDonald's straws that they're banning. They're going to yeah. use those. They're going to start using them again. Yeah. Flesh straws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. So anyway, and the day afterwards, I go to the neurologist and find out why my feet are. I put, I tried that stuff, that lipoic acid. Yeah. And it just made them worse. Really? <laughs> yeah, it made it worse. Yeah. So, Phil, we were talking about these 17 states in the United States that you keep telling me that these women are free to make their own choices, but I keep telling you if they can't make their own choices over their body, they're not free. Right. Well, it's just not free because the government isn't paying for it. No, no, they're they're not allowed to have abortion or abortion pills. They're not allowed. They won't be able to do that without leaving the state. It causes a financial hardship on all of those people. Those all of those women that are well, in the look, 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 listen. You know, we we have come a long way with this. Okay, uh, the uh, the fact is that uh, even if these women have to go to another state, there is somewhere they can go. Not know? always. Well, think about it. So it's 17 states. You have to be in a state that has a decent next door neighbor state. Yeah. You can't yeah. be. So it, it's not like so out Mississippi and Alabama. The, Mississippi is a shitty, shitty state. And it's not near other states that have. You know, you know, it's always pissed me off about these anti-abortion <laughs> people. I always you know, I never said I'm for women's rights. You know, I'm, I'm for I'm pro choice. I, I never use that term. I'm. I say I'm for abortions, okay? I'm for I'm for abortions, and here's the reason why: 
is is first of all uh, uh, how many how many out of every preg how many pregnancies is there a natural abortion that happens about i think one 25 out of 20 yeah i heard 20, it today is 25 percent yeah. of the time first world women lose their baby in the first and second trimester right uh, so, so that right off the bat is yeah. not that great of a number. Yeah, right uh, but my my point is is that this is something <laughs> that uh, it, it, this is a uh, something can happen to somebody that is going to impact their lives, and they are fully sentient beings of say over the age of fifteen. Okay, most of them. Uh, whereas that zygote that is the beginning of life cannot exist outside of the mother's body you and know that the, being, that uh, being the case that being the case it is completely her property and her decision of what she wants to do with it well in florida the governors the republican uh candidates for governor were debating today mm -hmm. and uh they both said that they wanted a law called the heartbeat law yeah, where, yeah. Uh, where if there's a heartbeat, uh, you don't abort. Uh, okay, so let's, let's, let's go back. Oh, cool. Let, let's take a step back. Then so it's just, I go. The 25% of the women uh, of, of the, the um, miscarriages that happen to the women in the United States, okay, in these first in our first world country here, that, Phil, if, if at the particular point that your law gets put into place, if I were a woman and I lost my baby because I was part of that 25%, you can now try me for murder. So that's what that a, a heartbeat law is. It means that it's going to you're going to hold women up to something that they that they have no control over what their body is doing for those 25%, and you're going to hold them accountable and you're going to take them to trial. So look at this. Just say you were a couple that absolutely wanted to have kids. Because I have a girlfriend who had seven miscarriages. And every one of them was just just horrid. To see her go through the pain and, and the amount of loss every single time. My wife had, my ex-wife had, uh, had a uh, miscarriage at six months. Yeah, yeah but, and so the point oh, is that... You're going through this stuff, and now some guy says, "Guess what? We're going to try you for murder because that baby was was." Uh, and was, nobody's trying anybody for a miscarriage. Yeah, they actually they do. They have, and they did. Yeah, and and in the '60s they, they did this. Yeah. See, when you want to poo-poo this <laughs> as, oh, it was such a long time ago, honey, we remember the hey, '60s. There, there, there was a time when uh, black people had to drink from a different water fountain. You know, and that was all for the 60s. You know, come on. You know, uh, I'm looking here what uh, what states, uh, uh, you know, have this uh, abortion issue. And I guess uh, Colorado, Colorado is Colorado one of the states that doesn't allow abortion? I don't think that's true. Which are you looking at? Uh, Wikipedia. Yeah. Well, I would probably choose like, I don't know, Mayo Clinic or Planned Parenthood or or pick somebody that uh, actually no, in, any we, infertility doctor i want to know which states didn't allow abortion and um, so, the, so the heartbeat law just passed in ohio and the heartbeat the other heartbeat state was illinois right oh. i should be right by on the way that. we've been joined by jackie you there jack i'm right here governor oh, turn on your camera will you oh thank you thank you thank you yeah. So if you search heartbeat states, mm -hmm. oh, I, I was looking for where abortion was illegal. Is, so do you want to know where abortion is illegal, or do you want to know which the heartbeat states are? No, I, I no, I want to know where abortion was illegal uh, in the United States in 17. States. Jack has his hand up. It says in the United States, every state has at least one abortion clinic, and abortion in the United States is legal. Okay. Uh, so it's not legal in 17 states, and the state of Texas only has three for its size. Because so they have you a say every state has one, that's not they true. Have, uh, yeah, they have found that's ways uh, around around the the uh, Roe v. Wade, but 
Uh, I think you may be wrong, Renee, but I, 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 the, the number you're listing may be too high or be, uh, how can I put it? Well, you had your hand, you, well, Jack Bishop. Six, six states have trigger laws, which I don't know what that is, and three states have laws intending to criminalize abortion. Okay, Jack has his hand up. I hate to say this, but for once I've got to agree with Phil. That is about the right count. My uh, sister-in-law from my first marriage was a counselor at a women's clinic and still has contacts in that field, and that is what exists. You know, uh, our good Republican friends like Phil have made it extremely difficult in many states for and a woman. In your state. Yeah, in my state. But here's the thing that I bring up to Phil Myers, why he's half-stepping about this, why he's not stepping up to the plate. Nowhere have you people suggested... You people? What do you mean by yes, you, you people? You, 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 yes, and you can call me you people too because you know how I am about that. It's all fair because we're talking politics and we blast each other and we attack, 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 and we get up the next day and attack some more. Let's get bloody. Everybody's got That's a junkie. That's the attack he wants. He wants to give me a heart attack. Hey, I can't, I can't get upset until hey, look, Tuesday. I'm the, I'm the hey, guy that's yeah, walking uh, around. Yeah, wait, wait, wait until he gets his bench. stent, okay? You know. yeah. hey, look, look, Phil. Yeah. You guys have refused to even suggest a border check of women as they leave this country to see if they are pregnant and to check them when they come back in. That's uh, an invasion of privacy. Hey, no, hey it's coming. And, sure. and forced pregnancy is a form of servitude. What do you mean forced pregnancy? Exactly. Uh, if you're going to force hey, women, if you want to have an abortion, I, I, I say have the abortion, but uh, have it before it's a viable fetus. You know. It's, well, no, but see, you just said your definition of viable fetus might be when a heartbeat is detected. Well, that might be a reasonable uh, definition. That's what the, I said. What they're talking about in the Florida debate today. Well, what is but, Phil Meyer? What does Phil Meyer think is reasonable? Well, right now, Phil Meyer says for Phil Meyer, he would prefer no abortion. For anyone else, uh, they have the right to choose, and I support that. Yeah, I agree. No, I, I agree. I agree with what he just said because I'd said that for years. That in my case, if uh, somebody came to me and said, hey, Alex, you know, I, you got me pregnant. Uh, uh, do you want me to get an abortion? I would say no, because I would want the kid, you know. Uh, so for me, uh, yeah, I'm anti-abortion for me. But that's what the whole thing is about, is making your own decisions. Now, if she wanted to have the abortion, then I would have no say-so over that. But all I'm well, saying you're is, saying is I, you're, you're saying on a personal level, no, you don't believe in abortion, but you don't believe you have the right to tell somebody else they should that's correct and that i think that's perfectly reasonable i agree with and, the, and with you do that. realize that planned parenthood that a, a is the most plan. reasonable thing you have said in the entire four years that you've been <laughs> with this show phil i hey my my opinion hasn't changed on that i mean renee can uh, renee can vouch for that four years ago i had the same opinion well how come your party doesn't take that same attitude i can't answer for a party I can only answer for myself. No, no, you have to ask Patrick that question. Patrick? <clears throat> um, I, I believe that uh, I like the heartbeat uh, rule. I think that, that's a reasonable thing that one, it has a heartbeat and it can live outside. The wolf. But, but, no, but it gets well, a heartbeat. It gets a heartbeat like in the wolf. third month. Uh, you can hear the heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah, earlier than that. Saying, if I'm going to go basic, I'm going to go by the heartbeat. However, um, my stance is personally, I don't like abortion on any level. However, I'm not going to sit prevent somebody from getting one. Um, that's up to you and your morals and uh, your God or whatever it is that you need to deal with, uh, not me. So. Unless I can overturn Roe v. Wade with one more uh, Trump yes. appointee. Yeah. The no. thing is you're, that you're I don't. Have more than I, one I, and you're going to be able to do that. I don't think that's necessarily going to happen, that's Phil. I think happen. I think it, that that, uh, that 
There, I agree. there will be there will be some justices, the ones who are even there already, who will go. Roe v. Wade has been the law of the land for forty years, and it's not something. Uh, it's precedent. We should not overturn it. So the other day when I asked you if you believe in the rule of law, you do for this, but not for other things. No, I don't believe in the rule of law because I think most laws are, are stacked against us. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you know, before they're, uh, meant, before, to, they're meant to protect property, not people. Uh, how do you how do you like that 28 year old uh, communist that they uh, socialist that they uh, uh, are running in the Democratic Party that beat Crowley? I, I understand that she wait a minute, wait makes a, minute, wait a minute. a socialist. socialist? Why? You, why? Yes. Why? She, she, uh, to begin with, no. there's nothing wrong with being a socialist. But go ahead. Yeah, uh, I, I, she is called for open borders. Yep, uh, I'm all you know, for that. She wants. You know, she hey, wants listen. More there votes. are two things. There are a couple of things about that woman. Number one, I know why she won. She is preferable to Crowley. She is smart. She is articulate, and she's hot. Okay. <laughs> Hey, I guess you like, you know, the uh, Puerto Rican look, uh, 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 Rosario Dawson. She's hot. No, 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 no. he likes the feisty br brunette. I, I, well, yes. Rosario she's, Dawson she, She's look. a feisty brunette, and she's, I think, I, I, I don't know what her district is. I don't think it's mine, but if it, if it is my district, I'll vote for her in a second. I would vote for Rosario Dawson if she told me to get into the ovens and on the train. She's so hot. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, what's really funny about this woman who won. She was saying that her district is more than 50 percent immigrants. And I thought that was really interesting. They can't it's like, vote. Brooklyn. <laughs> Most of them can't vote. I think that what what made her. her by the way, can I? I got to say something quickly here, mm -hmm. just to get you prepared for it. Next week we're not going to be on Tuesday or Wednesday. The whole network because it's. it's are, are you it's, shutting down it, because of my operation? Yes, because for, of your why? operation <laughs> and preparation of it. And then we'll do two, day, two days of honoring you before the operation. And then okay, no, but we're, we're taking it off because of the Fourth of July. Yes, uh, Patrick. Um, shouldn't that particular election prove to you, Alec, what I've been yapping about on here, that local elections matter? Yeah. Because oh, yeah. She, she beat somebody who assumed that he was just going to win. He spent her. He spent. He, winning, winning, winning. he financially, and, he spent 10 times the amount of money she did on advertising. So Hillary. You know. She spent more than Trump. She, she actually won the popular vote. Trump no, no, no. got yeah, but Trump got a lot of free she won publicity. The exit polls. He, Trump got a lot of free publicity. He skated on having to pay for it. Yes, pa uh, 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 Jack's got to yeah. talk fast because he has a show to do. Yeah, before I go, remember this. Also, there are a lot of those of us who have been unconventional lefties, you know, who vote, who've held our noses and voted. For people we would not have wanted to see in office. Brian is a good example. I'm a good example. Now we're getting some candidates that more reflect our position, and we're going to back them to the hill. Really? Because I, I don't think they're electable. Well, good. Well, it's all uh, by the way, by the way, this woman is electable because they're not going to elect a non-Democrat in her in her territory. Oh, okay, so she's 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 going to be a congressperson. No Go question ahead. about it. You know, it's just one. But she she never thought she was going to make it through the primary. That was where she had a nice big smile on her face. She couldn't believe it. If you saw her the night of the election, when she found hey, out she won, she almost let collapsed. Me say one yeah, Jack, I quickly. Anybody that wants to keep uh, this conversation going, come join me here in five minutes. Okay. Thank you, Jack, for being with us this evening. It's a pleasure. In fact, let me go on, jump Jack. you and, and let me go to, to Patrick, who. Uh, uh, should have probably just about the last word here. Uh, um, I think her her surprise mm -hmm. was more at her percentage that she won, more than that she won. I mean, I know she was surprised that she won, but she won by what eleven or twelve percent. Yeah, so she kicked his ass, and that again, it just proved, Alex, that you know you keep yapping that elections don't matter and your votes don't matter and she proved that a guy who had been there for 20 years that can get beat 
by a young woman who actually put her nose to the grindstone and knocked on doors that were never knocked on before. And what did she do? She pulled off a huge upset. And yeah. as you said, now she more than likely will be in Congress. Yeah. So the elections matter. And people who say they don't, they're full of shit. And look at that one. Yeah. Okay, let me see here. For some reason, I wasn't... Ah, there it goes. I couldn't, I couldn't get it going. But I got it going before the show was over. Hey, listen, that's it. We've had a, this is a great conversation tonight. This is, is, if I were to show somebody what the Citizen Panel was all about, I would point to this. Uh, and, and certainly Renee kicked it off nicely, and Patrick added to it, and uh, Jeff added to it, and, and Phil was there from the very beginning. And Kevin, we always love having you here. And Tony, good to see you back again. Uh, listen, everybody, I think it might be nice if you all gave everybody a big wave goodbye and we'll say good night to you. That's our citizen panel, folks. And uh, go over and see Jack. He could use the uh, he could use the company. OK, anyway, thank you all. Let me hang up on them. Uh, let me also turn my Skype off so the next show can use it. That's Jack Bishop, the guy you just heard a while back. Uh, he does a thing called The Intersection, and it's on next over most of the same gabnet at 1 o'clock this morning. Yes, you know what it is. It's Connections. Um, and then tomorrow night, 9.30, Damien is here with The Exchange and back again 10 o'clock tomorrow night. I'll be here same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs> <laughs>